I'm Ann Tyler Conradi. Welcome to Utopia Wimberley River Bluff. If you're watching this video, it means that you have probably rented the River Bluff yurts, and I am here to show you around a little bit. We have three yurts in a line down the property, and they are just down from the parking, which is to my left. So when you arrive, you can park up here. If you want to drive down and unload, there are spots to um, unload next to each yard. And if you want to keep your car down here, that's fine. Or if it's more comfortable for you to leave cars up on the Kalichi section, there should be plenty of parking uh, up at the front entrance. So follow me on down. The word for yurt in Mongolian is gur. The first gur in the line is rosagur. The second one is lolagur. She's orange. And our third one is Elliger, blue. These yurts are hand painted in Mongolia, handmade. Each one is a little bit different, but they all have the same basic layout with the king size bed, a sofa uh, next to an air conditioning heater, a little table for writing, we always have a guidebook and a guest book. We put a survey in here. We love your feedback on what you thought about your experience here and um, towels and um, that's about it. A blanket in the winter. Sometimes folks like to take blankets outside. Um, so let me show you about the air conditioning. The air conditioning heater is called a mini split and we have a remote control that will be somewhere either beside the bed or on the sofa next to it and the way the remote control works you have a fan button and a mode button and temperature up and down and if you want to change the mode right now it's on a for automatic if you change the mode it beeps at you and i've changed it to air conditioning a condensing of air a fan heater and back to automatic. In the spring and fall, it's nice to keep it on automatic and then it will adjust air conditioning or heat depending on the temperature that you've chosen. And the way you turn the temperature up and down, again, you just want it to beep and then you know that it heard the signal, just like that. And it, um, it's fairly easy to use. If you have any problems with it, there are uh, instructions in your guidebook on the desk in each yurt. So come on out and I'll show you the bathroom. So each of the three yurts has its own private little yard behind a fence gate door. So once you go through that door and you turn to your left, you'll see there's a hammock and a couple of chairs. And um, it's a nice kind of private yard area that you can use in mornings if you wanted to wake up and have a cup of coffee before you see your neighbors, it works really nicely. Then adjacent is the bathroom and we have a glamping bathroom uh, shower that is made from rock that's forged from around our property. And then we have of course toilet, toilet paper, uh, hair dryer, um, your bath towels are in your yurt and hand towels are in your yurt and then we have soap and shampoo. The last thing I wanted to show you in this private yurt area is your light switch that is right inside the gate. It's a photosensitive light, meaning it comes on in the evenings at dark and goes off early in the morning when the sun comes up. You can ignore it and it will light your path that you'll see kind of around on all the decks. We have these black lights that um, are connected with the photosensitive light system. But if it bothers you for some reason and you wanted to override it, all you have to do is hit the switch inside your private your area and then you would control the ones that are right around your area so that's it um, if you'd like to see the rest of the territory follow me this way area. You have outdoor lights that can be controlled right here on this uh, switch as you walk up to the kitchen. 
we have a grill that is used, uh, it uses propane. And the way we light the grill is with the valve over to the left side of the grill. There is a timer that you'll turn to um, make the valve on, and then you turn the pipe, the valve to be parallel with the pipe. And then you come over and you light the grill like you normally would a grill with the lighter right here and you turn it on. The timer will go for about three hours, so you're welcome to grill as long as you need to, but it keeps you from forgetting about it and leaving it all night long. Inside the kitchen, there's a light switch. We have plenty of plates and cutlery, dishes for cooking for the group. We have a two burner um, stovetop that you can pull out, uh, complimentary coffee, a freezer, refrigerator, trash and recycling, paper towels, and we usually include a couple of kitchen towels. So the kitchen is covered in case it's raining outside, but also if the weather is not to your liking, you can tuck into the dining yurt for actually eating. Let me show you in there. We have lots of games and plenty of seating and uh, you can hang out in here, uh, rain or shine, and enjoy the company of the group without having to go in each other's individual yurt. As you come out of the dining yurt, you're back in your uh, kitchen dining area and our TV is tucked around the corner. The TV remote is located in this back left corner of your uh, remote cover, and it's a Roku TV. It has the volume on the right side and apps that you can log in immediately, or if you scroll through, there's dozens of other apps that uh, you could log into, and then it will prompt you to log out on your checkout day. We just ask that you keep the volume relatively low. Um, the sound does travel in these hills, and so, um, it's useful if you uh, can just kind of be aware of the neighbors uh, across the way, and especially if it's late at night, just keep the volume at a reasonable, reasonable level. This is our charcoal grill that's also a smoker. So if you think that you'd like to use it instead of the propane grill, then you could just stop at HEB on your way in or Brookshire Brothers and pick up charcoal and it's ready to go. You can also use wood if, if that's um, something you wanna try. Um, of course, on the other side, we have the alfresco dining area with a big umbrella. If it's down, you can roll it back up. And um, if it's super windy, we ask that you pull it down so that it doesn't blow over. And um, that's your dining area kitchen complex. This is our fire pit area, and it works much like the propane grill. We have a timer that you can turn on here, and then you flip your valve, and then with a lighter that you would pick up in the kitchen, you light the fire. It works great for s'mores. Um, we don't generally recommend cooking any uh, food over here, but it's pretty fun to sit around for atmosphere. It kicks off a fair amount of heat in the winter, which is nice, and it's, uh, like I said, awesome for s'mores. These are your hot tub plunge pools. In the summer, they work great as plunge pools, and in the summer nights or the winter, um, they work nicely as hot tubs. They have two jets each and a heater, and it takes about 30 minutes for the heater to kick on, and then they get pretty warm, actually. Um, there are some lights that are attached to the lights that go down the hill, and now I'll show you how to control all the lights and the heater and the jets. On the corner of Elliger are your controls for the lights and the jets and the heater at the plunge pool stock tank um, hot tubs. 
So the first one here is the light switch and it is for the lights that are connected right around the hot tub plunge pools as well as the lights that go down your path to the river. So if you're planning to go down to the river and it's going to be late when you come back up, I definitely recommend turning this on before you go down so that uh, you have your pathway lit up on your way back. Um, and then the third switch here that is a timer switch is for the jets only. If you want to do the jets and the plunge pool and you don't want the heater, then you would turn that one on. And if you wanted to actually turn on the heater and the jets, then you would use this switch. And it takes about 10 to 12 seconds. You'll hear the heater kick in. It's kind of behind this tree here. And um, it goes whoosh. And then um, it takes maybe 30 to 40 minutes for it to get up to a desirable temperature in both hot tubs. So um, that's about it. Now I'm going to show you all down to the river. It is a hill country steep hike down there. So put on your hiking boots and follow me down. Down here at the river, we have a um, wood burning fire pit that you can use when Wimberley does not have a burn ban, which generally is not summertime. It's usually in the winter. Definitely check with the authorities and the Hayes County website before you decide to burn down here. Um, but you can bring firewood from uh, home and or from in town at the HEB or Berkshire Brothers. You can buy little things of firewood. And if you wanted to do a fire down here by the river, it's pretty fun as well. Um, and then our actual uh, river access is down these steps right here. So our favorite thing to do down here at the Blanco River is to river sit. We have chairs that are already down here. You can bring your cooler, your water shoes, and haul your chair out to the middle of the water and have a sit with a cocktail, and it's pretty amazing. <laughs> 